Hi, it's Anthony from CarPlayLife.com and today we'll be looking at an exciting brand new CarPlay product today, the Coral Vision CarPlay Dashboard Console. So this product is for anyone who doesn't currently have CarPlay in their vehicle and simply wants to have a portable solution that allows you to attach the console to the top of your dashboard and have it display CarPlay from your iPhone whilst its audio is transmitted to your car stereo through either its wired aux input port or wirelessly over its built-in FM radio transmitter. In the box you get the 7 inch display console itself, the mounting arm for your windscreen, a sticky pad strip that you place between the console and the dashboard, a 3 meter long 12 volt 12 watt cable that's used to power the console, a glass attachment for your dashboard if you don't want to use the windscreen as the attachment for the mounting arm. And there's also a manual and a warranty card. And specific to the wireless version of the two models of the console is you get a rear view camera uh, that sends a rear view feed to your display and um, various accessories to attach the uh, camera to either your interior or exterior. You also get a 16 gigabyte SD card uh, to fill with your media such as photos, music and videos. There are two models available for this dashboard console. The first is a wired only CarPlay and Android Auto console and for £100 more you can buy this model here which um, contains wireless CarPlay, a uh, better IPS screen over the TFT panel of the wired model, and there is also an additional 3.5 AV input port for use with the reverse camera that also comes with the wireless model. The dashboard console display has been modelled on an Audi display, and its maker hasn't scrimped on its display technology either. In this wireless model, we have a 7-inch IPS display, with a high resolution of 1024 by 600 which is a much higher resolution than most aftermarket displays. This means you get a much sharper CarPlay display than most $1,000 receivers. Its display also uses similar technology to displays found in Audis, BMWs and Mercedes which means you get a great wide field of view from the display with little degradation from its great colour display from extreme angles. All right, that's a quick look at the Coral Vision dashboard console. Let's jump in the car now and get this installed. All right, so we're in the Golf Mark 7 and I have the Coral Vision here uh, CarPlay display. Uh, obviously, we've already got CarPlay here, so just imagine this is a standard stereo head unit that hasn't got CarPlay and it has aux in or an FM radio basically that's all you need from this part of your car so we're going to install this first uh, get it powered up and then I'll just show you what you can do in uh, on the display basically so let's get cracking so the arm itself has um, a board joint on one end which just attaches the arm to the display and then you have a very small little screw here which keeps this arm uh, locked in position and that gives you a little bit of extension from the windscreen and then you've got uh, a sort of click uh, position uh, joint here where you can um, attach um, screw it a bit tighter there um, which will uh, allow you to um, angle it to your screen and inside here you've got a little uh, suction lever which um, secures the suction in place so you don't have to worry about it falling off your um, your windscreen anytime soon. All right, so let's get this um, attached on and in position. So that's in, got it fully extended. I'm gonna lock the, the sliding arm in place. And then you've got the uh, herd unit uh, mounted to the screen. You do have a, a very small adhesive it's not really adhesive, it's slightly sticky, um, probably has that gecko style membrane to keep it uh, in place. And you basically attach this underneath uh, to stop it from sliding uh, left and right um, and potentially marking your display too if um, 
if it's a different color and things like that but the dash is very hard wearing so i wouldn't worry about that you can mount this slightly higher uh, and um, have it hovering and what i've done previously as well is i've explored uh, reusing um, uh, a ball socket mount for an air vent similar to uh, this Avalair one here um, where you just replace the ball socket and attach it to the ball socket on the back of this display and you could actually have the display mounted from an air vent as well so that's a possibility too so there's quite a few ways you can mount this uh, but the one it gives you is totally solid if you don't mind having it on top of your display here and not obscuring your view too much but majority of displays are on the uh, top of the head unit here such as like Audi, BMW, Mercedes it's very common um, this is quite an old way of doing it nowadays um, but uh, yeah it's easy to reach here for, uh, to interact with things as well you can bring it closer by bringing it further up the screen um, but it's nice if um, you sort of mount it slightly behind your vision so you can't actually see it so I might actually do that now I might just mount it slightly lower so you can't see it actually what you can also do is you can actually bring that all the way over to give you even more an extension and then just spin it around uh, there's a lot of ways to do that this is going to give me a bit more uh, room and it's definitely going to make it uh, a little bit more uh, easier to um, attach the system to the screen so I'll just do that that's a little bit lower you can't quite see it now on the video uh, and, it's, and it's a bit more out of my view too uh, so that looks like it's part of the car now really so we're going to pull out put our um, 12 volt 12 watts um, DC in to the side here um, and then you can then tuck the cable a bit more discreetly out the way uh, along the dash uh, or down through any compartment that you've uh, got the ability to channel quite a long cable through and then at the other end you've got a, a DC in which is a cigarette lighter it fits well doesn't jiggle about very solid it's quite thick though I would have preferred something a little bit more discreet uh, but we'll plug that in uh, we've got our phone mounted up here it's got Spotify ready to go I'm just going to start up I've already pre-connected it to CarPlay, so it should uh, kick into CarPlay straight away. Uh, so for this head unit, all you need to have it, uh, if you're using FM transmission, you just have to have it connected to your FM radio, to the signal that the FM transmitter tells you uh, to uh, plug it into. Uh, so at the moment I'm using 10610. Um, if you go to the transmitter here, it's set to 10610 and it's turned on. So um, we're all good to go there. So it's a beautiful rich display. Uh, it uses a 1024 by 600 uh, resolution IPS panel display. So you've got a nice wide field of view without it actually degrading as you uh, look left and right. It's a display that's very similar or commonly used uh, in the automotive market for BMW, Audi and Mercedes. So you get a good quality screen there. Uh, it's more higher quality screen than my screen here. Uh, most screens these days are, are running still 800 by 400, uh, which is uh, nuts really, because uh, for mobile phones and tablets these days, you're getting a much uh, higher resolution display that we're all used to these days, and uh, the head units are still using um, archaic resolutions that we were using back in the um early 2000s if not earlier uh kind of resolutions so uh time's gone on we should be expecting higher resolution displays and there are a few coming out from um uh kenwood and pioneer they're now starting to adopt hd displays which is great um uh, and this is one that carries a similar resolution it's a seven inch display um let me just quickly see that so you can see the display uh, seven inch display and um, you can see here uh, I'm on wireless carplay already running from this device so wireless carplay here it's very intuitive very uh, responsive display nice pin sharp 
Uh, it detects the um, left and right side driving orientation uh, in the menu settings, so it's going to change the dock uh, to how I would like it nearer to me. Um, you can see the battery indicate here indicates that we're on uh, wireless CarPlay. And I'll just go into uh, Spotify here. Um, and you can hear it playing out already, but because I've got the volume down. So we're basically playing through my phone here. If I skip the track, you can see it's skipping on the display and the delay that you might get with wireless CarPlay, which is roughly about two to three seconds. Uh, that's common. Um, this is um, one of two models of the display. Uh, the display comes with wired and wireless. The wireless mode has um, the added ability to come with a rear view camera, which comes in the box, a very long cable to get to the boot area of your car and a 3.5 mil uh, AV in jack here, uh, which goes into the top of the unit here. And then you would have to like route the cable all the way through to the back of the car where you've got a um, mounted bracket camera here uh, for the rear view mirror, uh, sorry, rear view view. So basically you route, uh, you connect the um, cable to your, your reverse lamp and it detects that you're in reverse at that point and um, it will enable the rear view um, monitoring on the display. So if you've got no uh, rear view camera, this is a nice little addition. So this cut that comes with the wireless version of the display and um, the wired version won't have that option and it won't have that port either. So that limits your options a bit and that's why it's roughly about $100 cheaper as well to buy. So the wireless version, it does both wired and wireless. Um, it's a nice ability there and you've got the ability for having the rear view camera. And because it's an AV in, you might be able to go through an adapter and actually plug in some other AV equipment into that and have that appear on the screen too. There's ports on the left hand side. You can't rotate it and have the ports on the right. The orientation of the screen is only one way. Uh, but on the left hand side, you have a DC in. You have a USB port for wired car play, or you can actually plug in a memory stick with files in to play them, such as music, video, and um, images. Uh, above that, you have a uh, micro SD card. Again, you can load that with um, movies, uh, music, and images. Uh, above that, you have a aux in for audio. So if your stereo has an audio in input in your car, um, uh, you could just run an audio uh, cable, a 3.5 one, into that socket and uh, you'll get audio from this through your car speakers then without using FM transmission, which is sometimes better, especially if you're in a city environment with um, lots of radio waves and lots of radio stations and it's quite hard to find a, a dead zone of a radio signal uh, to utilise FM transmission. Um, using AUX is going to completely bypass that and you won't have that problem uh, and finally above that you have the AVN for the rear view camera at least on the wireless model here so that's generally the ports uh, we've covered the display uh, we've covered CarPlay uh, you can only go home there's no physical button on this display uh, so in CarPlay you have to use the um, system icon so for that it's the, the um, car icon uh, then you're back to the main menu uh, you've got home up here you can toggle um, night and dark mode so it dims the screen slightly these indicators here are for um, uh, SD card and, and memory sticks then you've got a Bluetooth uh, enabled um, option there too for Bluetooth audio um, and then if you've got any l music playing from a SD card or USB stick that would be displaying here and you can control it here uh, and you've got the day of the week, uh, date and time, 24 hours or 12 hours if you prefer. Uh, along the bottom here, you've got like um, a sliding navigation menu, uh, CarPlay initially, then you've got Android Auto. 
Uh, Bluetooth is basically the Bluetooth options in the menu, and because I'm in CarPlay, it's um, disabled that. FM transmission, if you want to change the, the signal to any presets, uh, if, if you're in an area that it's starting to struggle. And then here you've got music, video, and images. Uh, and then finally you've got settings, where you can actually toggle um, between five menus here on the left. Uh, you've got night mode. Some head units and some vehicles uh, run on the lights uh, as to whether CarPlay does dark mode or light mode, um, or it does it on time. Uh, this unit will do it by time, so you, as soon as we hit 6 o'clock, uh, the CarPlay unit will go into dark mode uh, and until 6 in the morning, and then it will go into light mode. Obviously, you can bypass that in CarPlay, but that's a nice feature to have. Uh, you can switch between radio areas, between uh, Europe, Russia and USA. Um, brightness, contrast and saturation levels. Uh, let's up the brightness a bit. Uh, and then you've got different languages of the whole operating system. Uh, this is where you set your date. We've done that previously. Um, if you want to enable phone link, so you've got Android Auto if you want to connect it to a phone. Link type uh, between Android Auto and Mirror Link, that would change the menu option for Android. Uh, driver position left or right, we're on the right at the moment. So that's pretty much all the settings there. Finally, you've got um, the music areas, uh, video areas for any video that you've got stored on a, on the memory uh, stick and um, or SD card, and that's pretty much it. And again, um, that will go into your last used um, media uh, location there. So we'll basically be dealing with CarPlay today. So we'll just stick with that for now um, everything works perfectly obviously navigation will come from the phone so your navigation will actually work as intended uh, using um, the GPS on the phone um, you've got a microphone port here which is um, going to enable you to uh, interact with your phone this also has a built-in speaker uh, which um, you can actually activate here if I turn the wireless transmission off it will start to come it's not brilliant, it's a token gesture of audio, um, but um, I mean if you haven't really got any audio connection to your stereo, you probably wouldn't have buy this anyway. Um, you can change the volume here. Um, so it's not brilliant, the speaker internal here. Um, I think mobile phones are probably a little bit better, so I don't know what the quality of the speaker is in here, but it's it resonates inside the casing a bit too much and I wouldn't want to use it as my main audio source so ideally you want to use FM transmission uh, or uh, aux cable so I've got an aux input in the car um, alongside my USB port so we're just going to connect to that um, and then we're going to run this cable into the aux input here So that's playing through walks. Um, um, that's going to give you the best quality uh, out of um, out of the box for between aux and uh, FM transmission. Aux is the way you want to go if you've got that ability in your car. So if you've got a 3.5 mil uh, socket somewhere for your stereo, it's likely that it, um, this can plug into that and use uh, your car speakers as the audio source. Uh, otherwise, um, you can take um, this cable and possibly plug it into like um, uh, a speaker like a UE boom or something like that so you can have so you can have the audio come through a speaker that you just plug this into really uh, you've got that ability too which is quite nice um, so it saves you, um, unfortunately you can't change the audio level because it's all independent to the stereo now. That stereo is not doing anything um, and it's just literally being channeled through here. Uh, but unfortunately you can't, you can't set the audio to this. You have to set it actually on the speaker. So. 
bear that in mind. And um, yeah, so you could have this in your car somewhere if you haven't actually got a stereo um, that has aux in. You could just literally plug in a Bluetooth or or a speaker, battery powered speaker, and power it that way. And you could probably run the power into the car if you've got a USB port or something, and have it. Um, channel the audio that way instead so that's quite handy to have too so that's the aux ability um not bad it's obviously more cables to worry about and to hide in your car but if you've got an old car and you've got a nice place to put it uh it's not a bad thing uh, and you actually have carplay uh to play alongside it as well which is not too bad so my first impressions pretty good this uh coral vision display Retails for roughly about $225 for the wired model and then $325 for the wireless model. Um, if you haven't got a stereo, you could get an Android stereo probably cheaper uh, and actually completely replace your stereo unit. But you've got to think about you've got to um, factor in the install cost unless you're doing it yourself. All the little modules uh, that you might have to have to make it work with your car system and your car power. And the benefit of having a display like this is that you could take this display anywhere. Like if you're traveling and you're sitting in a hired rented car and that car hasn't got CarPlay and it's something that you experience a lot, you wanna use the navigation for it, such as like maps and things. You could take this with you, you could take this display with you. All you would need is the display, the mount, the power cable and your phone. And you can take this across any cars that you drive and you've got this little CarPlay display uh, to carry around with you, which is brilliant. Um, another example is if you've got your current car, you could get this for your current car. You've, you know how to use it, it just uses CarPlay. It's got Android Auto in case you want to change your phone's smartphone. And when you upgrade, if you upgrade to a car that hasn't got CarPlay, you've got that ability of just literally bringing this with you. Whereas if you sold this car, I would have to probably sell this along with the car. Um, so there's that as well. So we've shown you it in wireless CarPlay mode. We'll just literally switch to uh, wired. So imagine this is now waiting for a CarPlay signal. We take our lightning cable and we plug it in. Into the right way. So you've got your uh, wired display and then we've got to plug this into our iPhone. It detects that we're about to go into CarPlay and we're in. So you get the benefits of wired CarPlay with the wireless version. But if you haven't got the wireless version, you just got the wired, you've got a nice fast display, beautiful screen, very rich color and brightness, great vision with its IPS screen and it's portable and it's great. And it works with a car, any car. Uh, you can mount it in various positions. And again, with wired CarPlay, everything's a lot more rapid. Um, it's, yeah, perfect really. Once we get an Android device, we'll come back with another video with how well this display works with um, Android Auto as well, along with a bit more uh, sort of first-hand impressions of uh, this um, Coral Vision display. All right, so I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give us a like, give us a subscribe. It really helps us out. Look out for more videos on this device and check out the links below on how to purchase it. And until next time, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.